This is the top video game podcast from HorribleNight.com for Tuesday, May... S- May? Yeah, May 6th. It's, May. It's, 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 May. it's May. It's the 6th. I don't know. 2003? Four? 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 Wait, Four. let me get a check out real 20, quick. 20. 2014. 20. What, what is your check? 20 odd. 20 odd. For, well, it's the only way I can remember the year. What, I, how, what, I, write why would a, wrong, I write it wrong on a check, I was gonna, and then I add one, and okay. then that's the correct year. I was, was going to say, how is a check going to help you? You can manually write that in. It's not going to tell you anything. <laughs> oh, man. I'm your host, Justin Lacey, joined tonight by Jordan Wilson, uh, hey, ma- Justin. Mas- master of time and space. <laughs> and, and math. And math. <laughs> and paying um, for things with checks, like an old man. <laughs> I, sw- I still have to have the checkbook, like... I, don't know. Mm-hmm. I do too. I pr- I prefer it. I like I like that monthly ritual of sitting down, getting your checkbook out, writing everything, you know, sealing it up in an envelope, putting the stamp on it, and then just setting them free. Setting them free. I will. I just I just like <laughs> buying a bunch of stuff at the store and making people wait on me. <laughs> and then like misspelling a hundred or something like that, and uh, having to rewrite the check and. Uh, I don't really care. Actually, the only thing I like about checks is they got rid of my checks at my bank, but like the month before they got rid of my checks, I ordered like five new checkbooks. So, so that so your I, bank doesn't offer checks anymore? Like they, I can no longer order new checks from them. And they wanted, they like changed my plan or whatever. Because they... Uh, at, so who do you order them through? Well, I ordered whoever I used, whoever you, they used to use. They just like... Uh, certain level, they just got rid of paper checks for most of their customers. And, <laughs> okay. But I ordered them before they like enacted it. that policy, so they still have to accept them. And I could basically yeah. use, I don't write very, like maybe two checks a month, and I could, I, yeah, I'm theoretically going to be able to use these through, throughout the end of time. Have you ever run out of checks? No. <laughs> I, yeah, I did that. I did that one time. Because again, one, two checks a month. So I get a book of checks, and I'm good for about three years. Yeah. I yeah. ran out of checks one time. Well, it takes them like what do four, I do? <laughs> yeah, it takes them like four weeks to mail you your checks. Well, that's the only way I can pay for like uh, my apartment or my uh, like utility bill or something like that. I every, every month I had to go to the post office and get a uh, mail a uh, money order. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. That's it was, it. it was the only way I could I could give someone money, get a receipt, and be able to give that receipt to somebody else, which is you know what a check is. So <laughs> yeah, I never run pretty out. Awkward, pretty but, awkward. Yeah, a couple of weeks. I've never run out, but I've just lost checkbooks because I'm irresponsible. So, mm-hmm. But eventually I find them. But the man that money order thing, that is a pain in the ass. Uh, Which if you're someone that goes through and pre-signs all your checks, that would be an unfortunate thing to do. I didn't know that was a thing people did. No. Okay. Nobody does that. <laughs> and if just, people do do that, just, and, and you lose your checkbook, <laughs> and you're, yeah, you deserve it. I gotta so. take the day off of work because I gotta sign these 500 blank checks. <laughs> I'm a busy person. I don't have time to write my name on every individual check when I have to send it out. It's just easier to sit down and write my check. I also I hire I hire someone to do that. For I me. also pre-populate the memos with things that I do often, and <laughs> I have to write a new one if <laughs> I, I sort it. Yeah, I have like yeah. a little. Card catalog. Let's yeah. see, uh, utility bill, April rent. Uh, mm, yeah, gentlemen's club. You know, right? Right. So this is a club. financial podcast. Yes, yes, we got that. Covered. Top financial podcast of the week. When you're not balancing your checkbook, <laughs> what are you doing, Jordan? <laughs> um, I I <laughs> am am trying to learn how to make uh, video games of mm-hmm. the two D side scrolling variety that run in your browser using HTML5 and JavaScript. I feel like you're. Um, Pimping something, but you're not. <laughs> Pimping something. No, just talking. Just being nerdy. <laughs> um, so I realized, like, all the um, little games that I've made so far, um, the most sophisticated AI that I make is a sentry that just walks to the left and then mm-hmm. turns around and walks back to the right. Just randomly just walks back and forth. He'll stop, and then he'll keep walking. So Not even, like, detecting the edge. He's just randomly turning around. Oh, I always put wall. I always okay. put like just enemy collision walls so mm-hmm. that um, player can run through it. But the I'm the just trying to give you more credit around. than you're giving yourself. So. Oh no, no. <laughs> and actually, the first time I ever did it, I made it super complicated where every the game was constantly looking forward and below to see mm-hmm. if there was a tile, and if there wasn't, then it would know. Then the uh, in, the entity would know it was at the end of the ledge and would turn around on it. And then I was like, why don't I just put in collision? Why don't I just put walls there that the player doesn't interact with? And bam. Whoa, life-changing experience. It was. Now I was that saving, that's solved. Saving milliseconds. What's your next, what's your next problem? So um, 
so the game I'm working on right now, I uh, for some whatever reason, I, I wanted to make a bunch of flying enemies. So I made uh, it's that game I sent you. Um, oh yeah. So it's just a fireflies. Hornet. Yeah. <laughs> Not well, you need f- every okay. Every time you start a project, Jordan Wilson is working on the Firefly game, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah. He's get, bringing it get back. Excited. Yeah. Serenity. We're we're doing it. <laughs> no. Every time you um, start a project, you have to name it something. And so the first entity that I made were fireflies in it. They're like there's like a hundred of them in the background, mm-hmm. just flickering and moving around randomly. So are they go. really fireflies. are they really fairies, Mister Zelda? Like, dude, is this a Navi game? I didn't even think of that. Now I have to read name I get repo <laughs> <laughs> to Navi. Oh, dang it! Hey, that. that's a good note. I'm gonna write that down. That's yeah. much better. That's my idea. I'm now that's on twenty five percent of your game that you're not gonna make any money on. Oh shoot. Now you're gonna sue me. But as soon yeah, as when, Facebook when, buys it, that's when, when I'm Facebook gonna sue you. Facebook buys me up, that's when you're gonna make your move. And, we, and we have we have record of it now. Damn it. Top. No. So um. So okay. So I've got a entity that's flying around in the air, and got so it. um, it's got to detect when um the player gets close to it. Well, to do that, you have two spots on a uh, on an X Y axis, and you have to determine the distance between them. Are you familiar with Pythagorean Pythagorean? Pythagoras. Theorem? Yeah, he's my Pythagoras. favorite Greek god. Pythagoras. Okay, so uh-huh. that one I knew. That one I had off the yeah. top of my head. When you have two points, you can determine the hypotenuse, the distance between them. Mm-hmm. So that the that it, entity is constantly checking that distance. As soon as the player gets close enough, yeah, then what? Okay. Well, I guess I'll have the hornet just kind of like fly towards you. All right. How? <laughs> <laughs> hmm. Straight line. So it knows where it's at, and it knows where you are. But the only variable I can really play around with is the uh, x-axis velocity and the y-axis velocity. Okay. So if I just set the speed, like the speed of the hornet's like 100 or whatever, um, and that's one pixel like every hundredth of a second or something, um, then he'll move real fast across the x-axis, but then he'll move real... Then he'll like um, he'll reach you on the x-axis before he does on the y-axis. Oh, so he'll, <laughs> he'll, <laughs> Moving exactly. at right angles. So, oh, well, shoot. Dumbass hornet. I need to variable one of the rates, and so I should have known this off the top of my head. It's just a rate equation. That's mm-hmm. it's as but, simple as that. But I ended up. But I was gonna say, but up, go ahead. Sorry. A, 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 but I ended up I ended up googling it for probably a half an hour, forty five minutes, and then I found like this um, uh, book, this like uh, Impact JS math developing book. games book, kind of yeah. And I just grabbed their. Um, they had like a big function that just explicitly was move to point, mm-hmm. move an object from one point to another, and then I got to looking at the code and I was like, oh man, I, mean, I should have just I, I should have just known this. This should have just snapped in my head. And it's funny because the Pythagorean the- theorem thing too. Um, when we did the game jam here for the, the twenty-four funniest hour funniest theorem. Thing, mm-hmm. I uh, I was sitting there and uh, I ended up creating like uh, a larger entity around um, a smaller entity, and that was the proximity detection. So whenever you would enter that entity, I was there was a collision Whoa. detection, and then the actual enemy would... It oh, would Bubble tell Boy, the, Bubble Boy would, AI. Yeah, well, it caused the game to run really slow, and that's when Travis and Alex were here. I asked those guys, and they were like, well, why don't you just, why don't you just track the distance between, <laughs> between the but enemy and math. the car? But math! But <laughs> math! Yeah. No, no so I mean, like, I, now, I get it, I though. Now. Like, I've been around you guys enough during your concepting and getting to know these these game engines to just like there's a, there's a there's a part where I just opened a coke by the way oh Somewhere good to uh, they're they're sponsoring us tonight so uh, got that got that other plug-in. other cold caffeinated beverages are available <laughs> um I've been around you guys enough to like there's a there's a moment when you're like there's a difference when you're programming and just like solving like l- logic related issues versus yeah solving math related issues and it's kind of a if you're not already in that mindset it takes a little a little bit for for that light to kind of turn on so i totally i totally get like oh man i've got it takes so long in fact i'll be sitting in this i'll be sitting in the starbucks just staring off into the distance Mm -hmm. and then suddenly realize like the guy sweeping the floor is looking at me because i've been staring at him (laughs) that's awkward but did he help he you goes, with your problem? He goes, you deep in thought? I go, yes, yes, I am deep in thought. And he goes, hey, I am. B squared plus B squared equals C squared. I, yeah, don't, know why, not... I don't know why the janitor sounds like that, but... 
Because he's a janitor. Oh, That's yeah. actually part of the job description. Is you have to be creepy. Is that a good Will Hunting reference? I'm I'm no longer sure what we're talking about. Matt Damon. But are you so has that taken your game development to new heights? The uh, usage of basic junior high level math. <laughs> it's a is Pythagorean. Th- I think it's just geometry. I don't okay. think it's. I don't think it's as advanced as trigonometry. But no, I'm now getting into the trigonometry okay. stuff. So. That, so that hornet just kind of dive bombs you. Well, I created another one. He stays away from you, and he shoots. And he solves an equation on the chalkboard. Sh- <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and then he goes back to sweeping floors. Um, <laughs> he shoots stingers at you. So this one, I have to determine the... Huh. Um, Ooh, yeah. The, some... I have to determine the angle, mm-hmm. and then using the angle, convert it to radians, and then somehow from there... That went well figure out the um, velocity, which um, luckily I enough people on the internet have had that problem. Sure. <laughs> but I immediately found the uh, piece of code. I have no idea. It's, co- it's you, you start dealing with cosine and um, sine no equations. Thanks. I'd so rather it, I'd rather not. I'd rather uh, make... I plugged it in. It worked. I'm, I'm good. All right. <laughs> I'm not I'm not at a point where I, I need I need to know. I don't know. What it I does. think you're 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 good. you're on the edge of a of a breakthrough of making some more uh, complex games so i'm excited for it even though well, I, math i think that yeah that that must be where like a lot of um you know the like just indie game like they just do one thing and it's like oh that's kind of a novel thing like you know they'll reverse gravity and the guy will now he's up on the ceiling or um it'll be like a white background and a black floor but you mm. can switch it now you're inside the black floor and the white is actually the walls i think you see games do stuff like that, and that's probably all they're doing. They're just switching like a variable or something like that. Mm-hmm. Or you're on drugs and it never happened. Mm-hmm. What you think about that? <laughs> that's a variable your math can't account this for. This podcast is not happening right now. <laughs> nope. Nope. Because um, I know I'm on. I know I'm on drugs right now. I just talk about video games all the time. Um, elsewhere, I think I'm still living in the '90s and maybe just like the turn of the century because. Outside of the like normal shows, I've just been watching 24 and WWE nonstop, and I don't <laughs> really know what I'm doing with my time. So I've talked about the WWE network a little bit, but basically I'm at this point where, so we bought it when we got WrestleMania last month, and the way the math works out is yeah, I've I've heard a breakdown of the right. math. So it, yeah, so basically sounds one, expensive, but it sounds. If I buy if I buy one show, yeah. I get six months of access to this network. So yeah. they had their second like big event that I could watch on the network, and um, so I figured I should watch it. And man, I am I'm just going down a dark hole with that stuff. And then when I because you're not watching new stuff, you're watching because you, you have not access watching new to all stuff. their old stuff. Too, yes, right? I have access to all their old stuff, but I have access to as far as new stuff. I have access to their live events, to their so their big pay per view events. They have pay per view events every month. Are there are there new stuff theatrically mm-hmm. as as good as the old stuff? Like are the characters so, as good? Um, I would say no because they've gotten away from the theatrics. The reason I l- yeah. actually like current WWE a lot right now is because the wrestlers are actually like technically better. Like so they've actually gone back to like <laughs> let's make an entertaining like physical match of that is believable and they've just got a lot of talent <laughs> on the characters are all really generic but it's not like someone just punching and clearly being about right you know, five inches away from the guy's face right. is it slowly re, you know reacts to it no just techni- I don't know, I technically sound wrestlers that they're really believable and entertaining so um i don't you know i just i had this moment where and you know, we've got a couple tvs in the house and usually my fiance and I will watch the same show like as the evening winds down, we'll watch it in the living room. And but I found myself like, you know what? I'm gonna go get go get caught up on some wrestling stuff. And <laughs> you know, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna put her through that. So I'll slink back to the bedroom television to watch some WWE and uh That's good. I, I swear to God, every time so I'll watch a full event and they'll you like, put that in your marriage vows. <laughs> I will I won't watch I will never force you <laughs> to watch, watch wrestling. wrestling. I will always slink back in into the back room. But every time she like comes back there for whatever reason, they get a blanket or whatever, and say there's like 12 matches in a show, in the middle somewhere there is one match that is their divas match. They're the, the, the women wrestlers that... 
she always comes in in the middle of that. So I just, I'm just like, <laughs> not only am I watching wrestling, but she thinks so I just. You, but it's you in the back room with the door shut, <laughs> watching women, women wrestling yeah. every time. I mean, <laughs> my dogs, my like. My dog usually follows me around, and he like lays down next to me. But as soon as I turn on wrestling, like he leaves. It's just, I just even, even he, it's just been a shameful, shameful experience. Experience, uh, but I love it. Yeah. So there's that. I, as a person, <laughs> what, how are you edified by watching wrestling? Do you feel like? Do you feel like in a situation where you need to defend defend your home, your woman, and your dog? <laughs> like. <laughs> Uh, I don't know. Have you learned the skills necessary by watching wrestling? Would it be you standing on your porch? Oh no. come on! No, I totally, I totally watch it for the dumb drama. So yeah, I'm not learning any All actual right. physical skills. So I can't do a moon salt. So the only wrestling I've ever watched in my entire life, um, everybody were dressed up in giant monster costumes, or some uh-huh. Japanese thing. Nice. That's pretty. That's pretty fun. I'd watch that. I'd, w- yeah. I'd, I'd watch you in a giant Japanese monster costume wrestling. You would watch me? Yeah, yeah. If you were doing that, I would, I would come see that happen. Just and gonna, then ask you trigonometry just questions. Why, why do you want to see me in a giant That's, monster costume? Wrestling. That's weird. It's, I mean, it's like if you see a guy in a costume and then you know that you know the guy in the costume, that's different than just watching a guy in a costume. Kaiju, Kaiju Big Battle, that's it. <laughs> chat, chat knows what's up. Uh, anyway, the other, I won't talk about this, but uh, 24 is back. Did you ever watch that show? <laughs> no. Okay, all right, but I love, so, I love um, this 24. Is, it's good, right? I mean, it's real Yes, cool. I, and I it's... I know tons of, people, tons of people love it, but it, it's it, the tons of people that are like my mom and her friends on oh, Facebook yeah. <laughs> that love it, so I don't know if it's good. Well, the funny thing is, the way I can relate all this, I watched 24 in between my stints of watching wrestling. Like, I took a like a 10 year break from wrestling. Mm-hmm. And 24. Did you wrestle a lot. Well, it, I watched. Yeah. Use folding chairs a lot. I watched it for this. I got the same entertainment value out of it. I watched it for the same reasons, for like just the ridiculous, over the top, nonsensical drama shit. <laughs> so. It's weird to, that my worlds are now converged okay. and I'm watching them both at the same time. And the weird. So if. If the drama is not over the top, you just you're not gonna have any of it. No, okay. that's a, that's a waste of time. Let's let's, yeah. let's be serious. It's good to know that about yourself. Yeah, it's it's got to be ridiculous, or I'm not gonna pay attention. Mm-hmm. So, all right, video games. Um, I think we still have time. Oh, yeah. I think we still have time to talk about those. Um, <laughs> uh, what 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 game did you bring with you today? What what game? Did oh, you so um, Kingdoms of Amalur. Mm-hmm. Reckoning. Reckoning. That, it was on sale uh, a couple of weeks ago, oh, maybe like three or four weeks. It was super cheap, man. I, I, after I, I feel like it was like five bucks or something yeah. like that. Yeah. Um, I'm having a lot of fun with it. Like you said, you just can't remember why, but you just quit playing it for some reason. Yeah. I think I know why you probably quit playing it. Being a um, you know popular video game news reviewer, you yeah. don't have time. You don't have time just to dick around in one video game. This game, um, I feel like it's procedurally generating side quests. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think so, but yeah. I have played the game for three weeks, and I looked at the map, and I, I haven't left, like, I ha- I've explored 10% of the map. I've been playing the game for three weeks. Like, every time I get to another little tiny area... There'll be a tiny little town, and they'll have 20 things for me to go do. And everything that they need me to go do takes a good 15, 20 sure. minutes to do. Yeah. So, but, hey, there, I like it. There are no short play sessions for Reckoning. Um, but, yeah, I was curious how you, game, you, I mean, you really got into Skyrim, so I was curious yeah, to see how this yeah. would feel. because a late, a late bloomer on Skyrim, but... Yeah, totally, totally love that game. Because the uh, I don't know the world and the quest system felt like a little bit like Skyrim Light to me, but in a, but in a good way. Just like I yeah. Um, but where that where Amalur kind of stands above Skyrim is is in its combat, at least in my opinion. Have you been yeah. enjoying that? And would you prefer? Yeah. Okay. Amalur, Amalur has done a couple of things that I'm glad I played Amalur after I played Skyrim yes. and The Witcher. Yes. Because um, yeah. I would compare this game more to The Witcher 2 than I would to Skyrim. Oh, interesting. Um, okay. Yeah. Yeah. It's it's 
third person, so you know you're behind the guy. The combat is much more like The Witcher, where you're, you're putting points in, you know, your sword or your magic, and then you're fighting groups of monsters, and then you have to kind of, like, okay, which monster is this? What are these oh. monsters? Where Skyrim, you know, just level up a ton of different stuff, and then just. <laughs> I don't know, just swing your sword around. Just kick its the ass. Enemy's run, the enemy's going to run up, and he's going to swing his sword around, and they're going to roll some dice. And um, Yeah, so this game is much more like The Witcher. How, Like I said, okay, the things that this game does, um, you can toggle your helmet on or off. Which yeah. Which seems, yeah. seems like such a minor thing, but um, I uh, when I downloaded Skyrim, the first thing I did was find the mod to toggle my helmet off and off. Because every game that gives you character creation... Mm-hmm. It's like, okay, male or female, all right, are you big boned or, or are you thin? And then it's like, okay, now the face. What do you want your eyebrows to look like, you know? Do you want your, what do you want your eyelash? You spend so much time modeling your character's face, and then the second you play the game, you find a good helmet, and plop, helmet on, yep. and you never see the guy's face again. Yep. And then all through you, now um, Mass Effect did do the, during cut scenes, you could turn the helmet off. Mm-hmm. So you could see uh, Fem Shep's face or Male Shep's yeah, face. Be- yeah, so that was nice. That was a nice setting. Again, I wish the, the helmet would always be off, though. Um, especially for Tali. The hell does she look like? That? <laughs> we'll never know. Um, Actually, I've seen it. I can send you some stuff. You get to see other parts of her, too. <laughs> her you, shoes. Yeah, her yeah. shoes. Thank you, DeviantArt. Um, <laughs> so that was, that, was a, that was a huge plus, being able to just... The game just right there. There's not that many settings, you know, and I spent, I spent a lot of time making my girl look cute, so I want to be able to see her face. The other no, thing I f- is... Um, I feel like they probably made that active choice when they decided it was going to be a third-person game. It's just like, you know, you're going to see your character, and, like, if anybody's going to play this game like they do Diablo, like, they want to see their loot on their character, and they want to, like, be invested in their character in that. It's just a, a nice little subtle touch that they... Yeah, speaking about there. loot, so I've never played a loot game before. never played Diablo. So... Okay. Like, okay. even Skyrim... Skyrim wasn't that... Wasn't a lot of loot. There right. were um, there was Daedric <laughs> loot and there was Elven loot. You know, sure. there was leather loot, and that was it. Yeah. And it was the same piece of leather armor. Um, and then you could make all this stuff, and so it didn't it didn't really matter. Like you never found a piece of armor that, oh, that's a purple one, or ooh, you know, it's, it's shiny. This game is doing it though, and so it's kind of obnoxious because every time I um, I kill a group of enemies, I now have to go through my inventory. However, the game has a junk button. <laughs> yes, it does. does. Does other Luke? Does Diablo or um, no? No, that was a that was a feature they were quite proud of. I remember. Yeah. So you um you click the start menu. There's a star next to inventory. Oh, you've got new items in your inventory. Click on it. You've got new items in your weapons and and in your armor. All right. Click on those. And so there's a little star next to everything. Go right to it. Is it junk? Yep. Press Y and it's gone. It's it's been moved to your junk pile. So this so. You know, after a battle or after a mission or whatever, you've been playing the game for 20 minutes. Um, click start, inventory, and you just go through your inventory real, real quick, look at everything, and then just junk it all. And then when you get to the shop, you can sell. You just press Y, and you just sell all your junk. You don't have to go. You don't have to manage your inventory. You don't have to go through every little thing individually. You already took care of it. You already mm-hmm. knew. You already defined everything that you wanted to sell. Man, I don't. I don't know if I could play another <laughs> RPG. If if I if I talked to a merchant and and had to go okay I'm gonna sell my weapons okay and then go to your weapons and then okay now I need to sell my armor wait did I pick up some weird little rings or something yeah oh, I'm pretty cool. sure for some reason I picked up man I love it I I hate that I'm I that I'm picking up useless equipment yeah. <laughs> constantly and things that I'm not going to use like I wish the game would go a step further and just be like hey do you just never want to see this stuff <laughs> yes <laughs> if if the damage is less than anything that I currently have I don't want to see it just just I don't it's okay not even worth that. anything don't even give it to me but you got to pick it up cuz you got to like get those pennies or whatever you get for it you can't just leave it there that was the <laughs> hardest thing for me to do in Diablo yeah. um when I went from being a, Dia- a casual Diablo player to be to being just a uh, c- complete noob, but like no longer casual, um, was I thought you were supposed to pick up all the loot, like if they <laughs> drop it, pick it up. But I was like, man, yeah. I don't have to run. To- I'm 
picking up all this shit. I've got to run back to town and sell all this, all this, all the time. He's like, no, don't pick up any of the grays. Don't pick up anything that you really can't use. Don't pick up grays or whites. Only get like yeah, magical it does the color, yeah. It does the color coding thing too, where purple items will be named items, and mm. then orange items are good. But they have an enchantment, and then white uh, items are always just the, like yeah, the plain, plain yeah, the plain item or something like that. But all the items sometimes have um, equipment slots, mm -hmm. so that you can actually add fire to it. And those are always white, but I can add stuff to it and make the item so much more powerful that <laughs> like it doesn't really matter that everything's color coded. <laughs> Because I can take a junk item and actually make it a really powerful item, but you would, you would. Yeah, I assume, I because I've heard, I've heard um, people refer to colored items in video games, and so I've always, without playing any of those games, I've always like um, Borderlands does that, right? Yes. Where you'll pick up a bunch of items and you'll just be like blue, 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 red. You'll just all right, get rid of all the greens. Da, da, da. Like you don't even have to look at what the item is or what its damage right. is or anything like that. Right, you can yeah. classify it, and yeah. Yeah, I don't even pay attention. But I was surprised that... So you didn't play Darksiders then. I'm trying to think the other... Because I had loot fatigue between... Not the second one. I played the first one, yeah. Yeah, the second, the second one was the more of the loot one. Because yeah. I was playing... I mean, I went from like Torchlight 2 to Borderlands to Darksiders 2, Borderlands 2, um, Diablo 3. And I was... Yeah, I had like loot fatigue and how you've missed <laughs> that wave. Um yeah, it uh no Amalur handle, handles that stuff really well. Like it's it's oh. it's just a sh it's a shame because like it does a lot of uh, a lot of things really smartly. I, yeah, the, the, which is real. Yeah, which is real weird. Like you it's would think fun all to play. these other games, all these other games would have figured out. So, um, uh, the best thing that it does though is at any point because you know the game, the game um, uh kind of direction into three paths. Are you a, a knight, a wizard, or a rogue? Mm. And it's very like, okay, if you're a rogue, you can only wear rogue armor, and you can only use rogue weapons, and your abilities are roguish. And then same thing with the mage. The game will let you respec completely mm -hmm. at any time. So I started out as a rogue, and then um, played that for about a week, and I said, nah, I keep picking up like really cool swords, Whatever, I'll just respect and I'll try the game as a warrior. God, I hated it. <laughs> like, I feel like I was playing faster and doing more damage as the rogue because I was just using daggers mm -hmm. than when I had a giant sword. Then I felt like I was just moving super slow and I was just taking a ton of damage. So I only played the warrior for like two or three days. I just switched to the mage. Oh my gosh, <laughs> man. I get in a fight and then I just immediately, uh, I'll cast meteor and then just... Fire rains yep. down from the sky and everything's dead. Like, oh, I feel I feel so freaking powerful. I'm like, I'm, I'm a glass cannon though, so I take two hits and I'm dead. Well, you're just taking hits. You just wipe everything out. I remember. Uh, I didn't get in there quick enough. I but think I, I, I also summon a I also summon a skeleton to kind of tank for me. Oh, nice. I think I yeah. I think that's I think I was playing the mage the mage route uh, when I was playing Amalur because I don't mm -hmm. normally play mages and I think I I was like I'm gonna play this game differently. But yeah, I felt just un. Stoppable, and I think yeah. that probably yeah. that probably just I, contributed I to no way. Yeah. that contributed to me stopping to play the game just because. Oh, uh, I love that. that. It wasn't that, that I was bored; it was just like I wasn't excited to keep going, you know. Okay. And, and I mean, See, I stopped I'm playing lazy. that the game. Game gives me a challenge. I'm yeah. out. <laughs> <laughs> no, I stopped playing that game like I do Skyrim. It's just like I probably can completed a series of quests, and I was like, oh, well, this is a good time to take a break. I'll come back to it, and just didn't come back to it. But, yeah, but, pro that that game's probably biggest pain point is um, the story's interesting, but yeah. Eh, yeah, there's so many other side stories going on mm -hmm. that wait, what is my main? I feel like you need to like and, to eh, to be invested in it. You almost need to read up on it beforehand and like really get a lay of the land of everything. And yeah, um, and then when they you know the MMO didn't end up going forward it was just kind of like well you know i don't really want to get deep into this now like there's yeah. just there's no there's no light at the end of the tunnel for playing the only amalur game and it's kind of a shame that um you know i i really would like to i would have liked to see a reckoning 2 or and i'm curious to see what is ha this team's basically been splintered since this game came out so mm -hmm. i don't i don't yeah. it's got a Actually, lot of interesting systems and it's just a shame we didn't get to see them the next iteration of them. 
You just beat me to my joke. I was actually going to say I'm really excited to see what they do next. Nice. <laughs> no, okay. I look back at yeah. like and I'm sad about that game because it was yeah. it was it was good. And they created a cool they created a really cool world too. So uh, it you mentioned that you got it on sale. Like I've mm-hmm. been waiting. Like I've had it. I had Reckoning on 360, and I was waiting to get it for my PC, and it would just never go on sale, and it was always <laughs> like thirty or forty bucks, and I'm thinking like. They got a lot of debt they have to pay back, was, man. Yeah, yeah, I was like... They, that, they the owe company, a lot of money. They can't put that game on sale. All the companies behind this, besides their shitty publishing partner, um, are are gone. So I was like, who the fuck is this $40 going to? <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't figure out. I was like, that's, is, that's a great question. Is, yeah. is, is Valve just pulling one over on me? Or are they just, huh. oh, no, yeah, you can buy the game. Here, yeah. It's 40 bucks. Yeah. It's, it's, it's what it costs us to keep it around, so... Um, anyway, um, my games of the week, uh, I'm going back to our arcade challenges recently. So, um, we've started doing up until a couple months ago, we would just play one random arcade game a week and play it for high scores. So people would go up to, uh, go, go up and play at their leisure and just record their high score and whoever had the highest score at the end of the week would win. We finally started doing multiplayer tournaments like round robin style. (laughs) And okay. so we, uh, when Broforce came out, we tried the, the, the deathmatch mode. Yeah. And that is just a totally different game, deathmatch. I mean, it is so, it is so chaotic, huh. and it doesn't seem like it, was, it would work, but it's a lot, it's, it's a lot of fun. The, uh, it's just you get hit once and you're dead, right? Pretty much, yeah. <laughs> you, but um, okay. So each round, um, it'll give you, I think, four bros to choose from, and... Um, it alternates who gets to pick first. So you pick your bro, and then it takes you to the stage, and you play, you have five lives, and the first person to kill the other dude five times wins that round, and then you play the best of five rounds. Uh, or the, the first to five vict- five rounds. So Yeah. Um, so it takes like 15, 20 seconds? Pretty much. Yeah, I mean... Yeah. Yeah. And um, I want to say this is our third tournament we've done. We've done some other games, but... I've been doing pretty well at the high score tournaments where I get to basically like brute force a game to get a high score and just really figure it out. Competitive multiplayer though, I am getting my ass handed to me. I like Are you both sta- you're both standing at the or the cabinet yeah. right next to each yeah. other, right? Yeah. It um like I can play with anybody, but I will just have random just the problem is the way our tournament's set up, like we keep track of how many rounds you win, and if I lose, I lose badly. Like I'll lose five to <laughs> I'll like lose five to nothing, but I'll like. Do you get real? Ner- do you get real nervous and sweaty too? I oh no! I mean, I overthink it for sure. Like I just yeah. like I play the game completely different when I know the 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 match matters. So, well, um, you said not too long ago in one of the uh, reply to all about. Like the standing in the arcade playing one of those fighting games, and as soon as another kid walked up, just, you just you threw it and you're out. Yep, yep. Oh, yep. you're really, I'm leaving. My I'm mom's really my good. mom's here. I gotta go get pizza. Um, yeah, I get really uncomfortable when strangers would challenge me in the in the arcade, but uh, it's 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 frustrating because I'm not I'm not even making the the finals. Like we do a round robin, then narrow, narrow it down to a final four, and I just I can't even break through. It's uh. It's uh, it's really frustrating, but that game is got a, our arcade cabinet anxiety, man. <laughs> that game Rough. is a better uh, multiplayer deathmatch game than I thought. And the funny thing is, we uh, yeah, I've not even tried the uh, multiplayer. To be honest with you, I didn't even know it had it. Yeah, it's got a bunch of little little multiplayer modes to it, like yeah. a we some, just played that we some just played race that. mode too. I don't know, the but co op mode. I mean, they're continuing to add stuff to the game, and like we actually ran out of time before the championship round. Like we tried to get it done Monday through Friday, and we couldn't play on Friday because of some some work conflicts. So we had to come back to it like the next week. And in between that Friday and when we played, they issued an update that changed how the grenades worked in multiplayer. Yeah. And so they <laughs> so they had to alter their strategies. So it was uh, that was a nice. I thought you were going to say everyone had been practicing all weekend. They <laughs> came in all all dark eyed no they're all just very confused like why did i run out of grenades it used to not let me run out of grenades no you've only got you've only got a certain certain amount so um i don't know if that's fair but we we played through it so wait the the grenades were unlimited before they weren't when we were playing they were and in the deathmatch mode they're unlimited like you've got 
well, that's just stupid. Yeah. So it's uh, a. <laughs> uh, that's just silly. But you can see how that would change your strategy. So. Yeah. Yeah. You're just not spamming grenades. Uh, this but week's chal- challenge, I finally so. There's a couple old games that have weird control configurations, and getting that to work <laughs> yeah. with our our main yeah. our main cabinet can be a little bit strange. And I've tried to play Asteroids before, but it just never felt right, and I could never figure out why. Then I actually looked up what an Asteroids cabinet looks like, and it was like, oh, they don't even have a joystick. It's all buttons. So I finally mapped that game correctly, and we're playing Asteroids. Asteroids. Yeah, we're playing. Really? That, game, that game holds up, man. That game is... It doesn't, it's not a ball? No. Like, I think there are a couple different ones. Turn. but So there are, there, are, there are five buttons. You want to use both hands. On, on the left side, you've got, a, you've got one but, button that rotates your ship left and one button that no, rotates okay. it right. And then, you you, have then the you've got your thrust, hy- your hyperspace. You've got your hyperspace button, which you never want to use because that's terrifying. That's the one that just teleports you around the ma- around the map. Um, and then you've got your thrust and your bullets. Yeah. Did you have your ludicrous speed button? <laughs> no. Good reference. Good reference. Good. Good. Uh, that's a deep, that's but I, oh my god, do I panic in that game? I like. <laughs> it's just like I I play it in such a way, and I think a lot of people do this when you're playing asteroids. You try to stay still in the center yeah. for as long as possible yeah. until you until you are absolutely forced to thrust to move your ship. And as soon as you and do, just like, that's it. It's like just because complete you, you've panic. You've been playing the game as still as possible. And it's so like, so oh god, moving like there's a whole extra layer that gets added on it, and you're, you're you're done. God, that little UFO comes in. What the hell is that guy's problem? I like yeah. I, I don't know why I'm out here in the asteroid field, but dude, why are you being a dick? Like, I'm like, in the, you, I'm in yeah. the asteroids. I get, I'm mining. I'm, I'm just trying to survive. I don't know what's going on, but come on, man. Oh, the, yeah, I hate those guys. <laughs> comes in out of nowhere, st- stupid little whirling sound, and then yeah, he guns right for you. Um, the I, I was I was up at the top of the leaderboard, and it came down to me, one little asteroid, and one UFO, and I could not kill the UFO. We were just I was like just jetting across the screen, just completely panicking and spinning and shooting everywhere because I didn't want to slow down because I didn't want him to hit me and I eventually um, dodged the asteroid but ran into the UFO which is next to impossible because they're moving so quickly but huh. um, that game is uh, uh, it's brutal it they is, don't make it like that anymore no they, they try to games are easy yeah nah. <laughs> kids don't know how good they have it all right, game game pitches before we uh, get into our headlines here of the week. Okay. Did you have something before we dove into these? Nah, I have a I have a real game. It's not really that funny. All right, all right, we'll go with funny. Okay. All right, so we talked a little bit before, before the show um, about um, one of the RPG games. We'll talk about it later that we've been playing, but co-op games where you're playing with friends and your friends just they stop cooperating. Because, hey, it's fun playing with your friends. Everybody gets along. We all like each other. Oh, wait. Until someone turns into an asshole. Your friends aren't fun to play games with because they were all assholes. And, but there's. Here I am. You're dead. You're waiting on your friends to revive you. And there's nothing you can do. And suddenly it's funny. It's funny that they don't revive you. Mm -hmm. It's hilarious. It's for like three minutes. Yeah. And then it just keeps being funny. (laughs) (laughs) And there's nothing you can do about it because you're dead. Yep. What can you do? You're so, just laying there waiting to be revived. So we need a game where you can turn against your friends and become the boss. That was, mm-hmm. or at least like somehow penalize them for like not. It's basically penalizing your friends for for screwing you over. There's got to be. And I talked about like you know if the game can detect that your friends are actively ignoring you or actively not helping you. Mm-hmm. That it needs to somehow penalize them. So let's paint the picture. So maybe first-person shooter, you go down, mm-hmm. and it's not you. There's no timer. Like it's you know it's not a multiplayer match or anything. It's all co-op. Um, and you're laying there. You're dragging your you know your broken legs across the the map, and the game's telling you, hey, so you know, Jordan's down. You should go help him. <laughs> everyone's like, oh, 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 Jordan's down again. Oh, just leave him. Oh, we're actually playing better now. Uh-huh. Yeah, imagine yeah. that. So something needs to happen. There needs to suddenly the game needs to go. Hmm. Everybody, nobody else is doing anything. It's not like everybody else is caught under a lot of fire and they can't get to him. No, they're all actually just standing near his body. <laughs> and they're not doing anything. They're all just standing there. Yeah. 
So yeah, the game, the game. It, so it needs to figure that out, and then the game needs to suddenly give you a choice. Like mm. your friends have turned on you. These are your brother brothers. These are supposed to be your brothers in arms. They're not. <laughs> so I want the game. I want the game to then all of a sudden, a choice pops up on the screen. Like do you do you want to betray them? Do you want to turn against them? Yeah. And they so and basically because then because then your your teammates want to res you because <laughs> they want to get you back. You're about to go into beast mode. Yeah, then you're gonna you're gonna just yeah turn into a zombie. Because I was actually I, I was actually thinking that like, and so the guys that made Left for Dead they're working on that new game Evolve. Like they, this would kind of be up their alley. They've got the whole the whole thing down where you're playing cooperatively against each other. You're playing and joining the other the other faction but like i like that little moment of the other players have this window where they can like do if you don't revive me i'm gonna turn into you know Mm -hmm. i'm gonna turn into the boss and you guys like whatever you're fighting right now i'm going to turn into something worse Mm. and i am coming for all of you with a fiery vengeance and so nobody would help me i just sit there for a minute not playing the game listening to you guys play the game and have fun. I'm coming for all of you. Which would be, so that would be, it would be hilarious, but do you think, like, if you destroyed your friends, what happens then? Is the game over? Is, <laughs> like, I kept thinking, like, and if you, if you yeah. challenge them and you lose, you're no longer allowed to play, or... There's an unfriend on Facebook button that pops up. <laughs> Just sever all ties. I really with these like people. that for some reason. That's really yeah. that's like lame enough that I could actually see that happening. Instead of like yeah, like we'll post to Twitter how good you did. Disable all of these people's Twitter accounts. Unfollow. Yeah. Now there's got to be something though. Like I, I could I could see it really working with a, a loot game where you mm-hmm. basically you get their gear if you if you destroy them. Ah. Like um, you get to collect yeah from their corpses. Yep. Yeah, you get to collect their items. And then um, and they have to like. <laughs> and you can hold their gear hostage until you've accepted their apologies. <laughs> yeah. <coughs> Sell it back at a premium. Yeah. Yeah. I think I think that's the route to go. So one other thing I'm doing here, um, is I've been a big fan of this game generator made by the uh yeah. the cookie clicker dude. I'll just post that link in chat. So um so we're going to randomly generate a uh title here, see what we got. Sounds boring. All right. Do, 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 do. Nope. Those, these sound like actual games. I need a I need a fantastical <laughs> one. I just got one with the word fetus in it, but I went ahead and closed Ooh. it. Let's use that instead. Um, fetuses. You might if you get something one about, first. There's something about linking fetuses together. Just <laughs> So oh, it's using the word reticulate, and I don't know what that means. So can't use that one. Okay, I think a, your joints reticulate. <laughs> Maybe. Maybe. It's, uh, Do we have any mathematics scientists in the chat? Tell I, us what I think we scared off all the mathematicians with our trigonometry talk. Um, <laughs> it wasn't yep. trigonometry at all. Well, see, uh, uh, a game where you slay vampires in the mountains. That sounds... Um, <laughs> Sounds like a game yeah. I've played. Several games, actually. <laughs> All right, I'll hit it too here. An FPS where you eradicate thugs in the fifties. That's a game I've played. Yep, yep. An adventure game where you hide from knights on an island. Yeah, these are too normal. This is. Well, there's a sanity button. Click it. Turn it off. Oh, where's that? Okay. Oh yeah, I've got it clicked. My bad. <laughs> A tycoon game Apparently. where you tickle countries with your eyes closed. <laughs> I mean, that doesn't even make any sense. Uh. All right, I got it. This is what we're going with. Uh, okay. We... You say yours, but I still want to say mine. I'll say go, mine first. Go, for, go first. An MMO where you go to war with the ocean. <laughs> 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 I'm thinking Aquaman, like dolphins. Like, it's, they're, they're the enemy. <laughs> but it's an MMO, so we're all we're all assembled together to fight. I think it's just not Mother Man, it just just. But it's the worst something. MMO because it's all underwater. <laughs> yeah. All right. Yeah. So the one we're going with a shooting game where you time travel with giant crabs before right. the apocalypse. Okay. 
So I'm going to assume that we're time traveling to avoid the apocalypse. I think yeah, it sounds like it's an, the apocalypse, or are we are sounds, we bringing the apocalypse? Is the apocalypse coming with ooh. us? Read that. I, so uh, my first interpretation was the, the giant crabs, the the thing that ushers in the apocalypse. I we're think, going, we're getting them, and we're bringing them back because you know what, man, things society's falling to shit. Like everything, just let's just burn it to the ground. Let let nature start over again. So we're going to usher in the apocalypse. So we need to go get the giant crabs because yep. everybody knows giant crabs. Okay. Apocalypse. I mean, it just it just works. So obvious. If it's a shooting game, it's kind of so. Now I'm picturing Bill and Ted's it, uh, adventure. Like, All right, don't adventure. do that. <laughs> Stay with me. Put Stay that, with put me. That, oh, okay. All Stay right. with me because you're having to travel through time to rescue these giant crabs. So they're they're just littered throughout time. Yes, they're littered they're, throughout they're time. They're out of their own time. Because if you bring them all okay. together, it brings about the apocalypse. All right. Okay. So you're actually kind of an, an evil time traveling dude, and but you you rescue these giant crabs, and they like somehow augment your hey, hey, abilities. It's not evil. It's 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 just a matter of perspective. <laughs> We're helping these crabs. So for the on the crabs perspective, we're the good guys. You could be a crab yourself. But in you're the, a half crab, half half human. But if you bring about the apocalypse, don't the crab. crabs die too? Well, unless you know they they can exist in a realm where all space and time have been destroyed. Mm. I mean, they're giant crabs. Why not? That 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 also can travel through time. I don't know why they're in. What kind of? If you're a giant crab, what kind of time? shooting weapons can you hold? Um, I think we're the ones shooting, and maybe we're defending the crabs. I don't know whose side you're on, Jordan. <laughs> Which one destroys humanity? I'm on that side. I think they all, but the, every that's the weirdest thing. They all that's the messy thing about the apocalypse. If you bring about mm-hmm. the apocalypse, you also still die. And Unless it's a zombie apocalypse, in which case, you know. So ultimately, there's some there's giant amazing. lesson learned at the end of this game, um, mm-hmm. and that's um, eat something. More crabs. To, I was gonna say something to do um, with clam chowder. Yeah. Yeah. So. Eat more Long John Silvers. Yes, all right. <laughs> yeah. Brought to you Whole by game, Long John it's, Silvers. Because if you don't eat more Long John Silvers, the apocalypse. Can the game be called Hush Puppies? Oh, man, those are so good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Hush Puppies. Oh. Okay. That's all right. It. Okay, good. I'm glad we, glad we sorted that out. Um, what's up here? What's, what's, what's our first headline here? Oh, I can kind of combine these two. This stuff happened. Feel good stories. What are things going on in the gaming news? Stuff's happening. Um, so let's let me throw these out there first. Um, first thing, there was an early access game on Steam called Earth Year 2066 that apparently a was great com- game. Worth com- the money. <laughs> apparently, it was good. It's fantastic. It was so exactly what, exactly what was promised. So shitty and broken that Steam actually removed the game and is giving refunds. So, yep. the last time I heard about this was the, it wasn't, what's, it's not DayZ, what was the other zombie game? I'm glad I forgot its name, but there was, I've only, I've only heard of this happening yeah. one other time where they basically took the game down because it's like false advertising, this game is just broken, it's not ready yeah, for people too. to play. I got a question for you. Uh-huh. So, as far as you can remember, only two games you've ever heard of this really happening, right? Yes. So why is it every time I read the comment section of one of these stories, it's people being like, this is the problem with Steam Greenlight. <laughs> Crap finds its way through. We need to come up with a better system. What is like what's what's happening here? Like it's the video game police. Are, are, are there are there tons of shitty games that are on Steam right now? Damn. I mean, I, I don't care if they're the, shitty. There's a difference between shitty and broken and unplayable yeah. and not what you said it's if you, if it's what you describe on the tin, tin and it works, and I bought it, that's that's on me. If mm-hmm. if it's not what you say it is and it's broken, we've got some issues. So it's just I don't know. It, it's good that you know at least Valve's out there. There are instances of giving them giving them the money back. I I like I, the green light. Yeah, there was a as different was a bunch issues. of real super super shady stuff going on around this because like um it was real clear that whoever made the game really wasn't taking the bad criticism very well. It was deleting comments and then was cr- just creating accounts to speak highly of the game, which mm-hmm. yeah, just a, 
that's just a douchebag move. Don't don't do that. But also, um, it's an understandable move. If I if I had just made a game for the first time and put it on Steam, that's a lot of attention to suddenly get. But there was also a Reddit cam- campaign against the guy, so it wasn't a couple of comments. Right. It was probably hundreds and hundreds. I was gonna say like of it- comments a day, just constantly rolling in. Well, if I'm if I'm a develop, okay. So if the okay, so I'm gonna play devil's advocate. If the guy if this is the guy's first game he ever made, put mm. it on Steam Greenlight, just you know, to tr- start to try and get some money in so that he can, can continue to work on the game, and you are suddenly hit with this tidal wave, this shit storm of just <laughs> yeah. angry people this who don't happen. understand why. This will happen too at some point. <laughs> yeah, why your game is on here and why you're charging $20 for it. Th- that, you might not know what to do, and you mm. might be like, well, you know, I'm just going to start deleting some comments, and then I'll have my friends post some stuff on there. And then the internet's going to realize you're doing that and then now we're going to get other people involved just because they don't care anything about your game they just don't want, they don't like the idea of people doing that and so now they you know now they've jumped on the shitstorm bandwagon too or the guy was trying to milk the system because man if I can just get if I can just lie to enough people at 20 bucks a pop yeah I can come out of here with a couple hundred <laughs> bucks oh, if those that's what too. was happening then eh, then maybe we need that individual's name <laughs> I mean, I and guess maybe there needs to be some legal reper, you know, reper, repercussions. For I, I, I was going to say, like the good, the good part for me is that Valve now has precedence that they that they've done they've done this. That this is a possibility. Yeah. If that someone put up put up a game, people bought it, and it was not what was promised to them. And because it's so Valve has refunded it. It hasn't happened. Like I said, this is only the second time I can recall it happening. And knowing like the amount of outrage it takes for that to happen, like I feel like there's probably some legitimacy to, to the claims here that the game is not what it says it is, and um, yeah. But I I I do, do you know. The, I was do you think s- that that outrage though is? Do you think that's right? Do you think that I, that's, I, I like, think we're gonna we we're that? gonna we're gonna see the other side probably very soon. I think that will like there will be some misplaced out, outrage against. The scenario that game, you're talking about, yeah, a game that's perfectly fine that just wasn't what you expected it to be. Yeah. Now suddenly, I'm trying to get all my friends to yeah. unlike them, or yep. you know, rail it's against. Certainly them. possible, yeah. and so then we'll get to see the the other side of these policies. But but anyway, like first first reaction was that this this is a positive thing just to know that Valve is at least looking out for some of this stuff now. Yeah, uh, I I do like. I do struggle a bit here because it's like, okay, people are getting their money back. <sighs> now, I'm not someone who lives pay, you know, paycheck to paycheck. So when I hear of someone who wasted $20 on a video game that sucked... Yeah, well, yeah, that's a whole other... That's, like, that's the way I think of it. Is, eh, you wasted 20 bucks yeah. on a video game. Like, yeah. eh, yeah. you gambled, you know, you didn't, and you, you came out a little, at a loss. Yeah, I... So, I I, I'd be in that same. That's bit. kind of the side of it that I keep. I keep thinking about it, but obviously the precedent is set that I want to see what it will do, take. If you do, if you get scammed yep. and someone takes your money, yeah, that's not right. Which is kind of similar to the other story. I don't want to belabor this one too long, but the entire state of Washington apparently <laughs> yeah. is uh, suing this Kickstarter campaign uh, for failing to deliver on. Uh, mm-hmm. It's basically, I think it was a card game. Yeah, and the Kickstarter launched in September 2012. They raised, um, they were asking 15k, raised 25k. Um, that was it? Yeah. Oh. And the estimated delivery date was December of 2012. And so, just in this last month, because there were so many people from the state of Washington that were backers, they have um, filed a lawsuit, a, a breach of contract lawsuit um, against the. Uh, the creator of the Kickstarter for failing to deliver, and because there's just been no movement on it, and yeah, and that's man, that's weird too. Like, you read the comments and uh, to that article, and you get a lot of people who are like, "This is setting a bad precedent for people who want to start Kickstarters," because mm-hmm. a big a big part of starting a Kickstarter a Kickstarter is, man, I've never done this before. But I know I need money because I need to quit my job for a little while. Yeah, you know, I I need to just focus on this. I've never done this before, so man, I don't know if I can do it. And there are no. some, there are some types of people that can like communicate their way through it and kind of be honest with, "Hey, I'm in over my head." Versus, I believe this guy just kind of went silent and hasn't really yeah. made any movement or to even reach out to his community. So he's he's crossed a little bit of a line here. 
Yeah, definitely. And then, like, to to follow up, those guys in the comments were saying, it'll start weeding people out, though. But that might actually be a good thing to yeah. have these people weeded out. Because if if you're if you've heard these amazing, wonderful stories of Kickstarter, just you know, people like, oh, I only need thirty thousand. I've got forty million dollars. Right. Oh my gosh, you know. Yeah, if you aren't business savvy enough, if you aren't able to manage your time, and if you're not a responsible person, yeah, maybe you don't need to start a Kickstarter because if you try it and fail, mm -hmm. there are there you are going, then there will be legal yes, yes, I believe because of it. And I think that precedent is important and just part of the maturation of that of that platform. Yeah, um, but also like it does bring up the other the other side that you're saying. Um, the, the sense of ownership that people feel when they donate to yeah. Kickstarters is there's there's a weird line That's there weird. too. Yeah, you see people you see people get real attached to something. I know that happened with the Oculus. Like, oh, so you donated thousands like, of dollars to a card game that by someone unproven. Yeah, yeah. Investments yeah. risky. Yeah, <laughs> I know that happened with the Oculus Rift. A lot of people um, who uh, who were part of the Kickstarter were real upset about the Facebook buyout. Yeah. Just in just because they thought. They thought they were part of it. They were they 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 paid into this indie thing that they wanted to remain indie. But man, it's a business. Like yeah, mm -hmm. you you helped them get going, but they need to keep going. Mm -hmm. yeah, also, they, not, you don't you don't own stock in the company. Yeah, that's not what Kickstarter is. Yeah, and, we, we didn't. You, there was no paperwork signed. So, but again, yeah. these these are the first times gonna like I said, going through these these steps of maturation for. Um, these platforms and um, yeah, I mean, uh, for all the people complaining about st uh, Steam Greenlight on that side, like <laughs> this is the kind of the back and forth that's going to yeah. have to happen before you know before there is a there's there needs to be a barrier of entry for the developers to be like, no, I'm I'm serious about this and I can make this happen and I can deliver on this stuff and same thing with Kickstarter, but also yeah. on the 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 people that are buying early access games or kickstarting. Uh, campaigns, they need to know the risks on their side too. They aren't, yeah. they don't, they aren't yeah. owed the world either. You don't, you you spent twenty bucks on this thing. I don't, I don't owe you my my life. Like, so. I owe you about twenty bucks. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> but you, but you kind of gave it to me, so yeah, I don't really, yeah. I don't really owe you twenty dollars. Um, next up, uh, the. Dead Island developers Techland, they released a new trailer for their game Hell Raid, which they announced a while, but I want to say pretty soon after Dead Island, because the 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 thing that stood out about Dead Island was its melee combat. And they kind of they're like taking that concept and applying it to dungeon crawling, which makes a lot of sense. First person awesome awesome first person combat um destroying skeletons and the like. And uh Anyway, they've upgraded looks, their engine. Looks beautiful. It, it looks it looks awesome. But yeah. when you were talking earlier in the show about just like <laughs> some of your issues with AI, the problem the problem with developing a zombie game, which is what I, I know what, these guys for. You made a weird you made a weird comment to me in our uh, in our in the in the con <laughs> yeah in the yeah in the Google Dark. But then I watched that video and I. I think I'm with you, man. Okay, yeah. so zombies are dumb, right? They, yep. they see, should be dumb. They see meat. They see human. They see they smell brains, and they go at them. They just yeah. see their Be target long. and go sure, towards sure. it. Not all of Hell's creatures that I would expect to fight in this game um, will need to do that. And everything that I've seen in the trailer just looks like Ske like the, skeletons, the skeletons rushing you, yeah. <laughs> and I'm yeah. just like, you're gonna like. It looks awesome, but are any of these enemies intelligent? I haven't seen any evidence of that, so I'm I am I'm concerned because that's what made me bored with Dead Island after a few hours. Oh, yeah. So um, I want to believe, huh. but um, some causes cause for concern there. But well, okay, I got a question for you. Can mm. I remember um, Left for Dead or not Left for Dead? Um, the the uh, <laughs> oh my gosh, um, zombie game. Yeah, but zombie. it's the uh, parasite zombie game. Last of Us. Yes. Okay, I remember the first time that trailer came out, and it was like, oh my gosh, like the guys can hear you reloading your gun, and yeah. they know you're out of bullets. When you played the game, I mean, did the AI? Yeah, I know was it that, that groundbreaking and incredible? Or, or was well, it just I wouldn't like, call it ground. Okay, if, I I would, I throw, if I throw the brick, they're going to go towards the brick. 
That's the thing. Like they, I, I mean, they shooting at them. They know where I'm at. They, they, and I wouldn't say it was groundbreaking, but they were pretty intelligent. Like, okay. but, but even with intelligent, a, a, intelligent AI, um, sounds redundant. Um, the, you find ways to work around that system because I mean, yeah, yeah they did. They you picked up the limits of it. They picked right? up. They they reacted based on whether or not you were shooting or had a melee weapon equipped. They did react if they heard you reloading, and but then they had you know they only have a couple courses of action in, um. But there there were layers to that. It wasn't just okay. just so there's enough you. of those layers that if you played a game and say this this hell raid game turns out and it's literally just enemy sees you, enemy runs at you. <laughs> Uh-huh, yeah. You have gotten you have gotten used to a little bit more complex AI that that is just going to be so glaringly just boring. That'll be dull. Like that'll that's, be. That's yeah. what your fear is. Yeah. 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 I mean, smashing skeletons in like gruesome ways is entertaining for a while, but mm-hmm. I hope that they they have a step two to their plan. So, um, because the thing that Last of Us failed at that the DLC helped with is. The DLC actually started combining the human the human enemies yeah. with the zombies, and they would interact. And I that's what I want to see. I want to see the dumb enemies and the smart en- enemies and different combinations of those. Uh, so I have to. So then I have to react to the situations differently, and yeah. um, that's what Hellray would need as well. So, but I don't know. It looks awesome, and you know I want to see Techland do something else, uh, build off of their Dead Island success because. Um, I don't. Anytime I come across a, a developer of a zombie game, that's like that's my big question for them. It's like, can you make this more complex? So. <laughs> yeah. Do your zombies do anything but just shamble about? Speaking mm-hmm. of games no. that are just surefire, can't miss. I just I'm gonna play it. Actually, I have no idea. But honestly, the new Call of Duty Advanced Warfare trailer. It's the best call. <laughs> it's the best Call of Duty trailer I've seen in a while. So yeah, had my I, uh... had my attention. But you you sent me the link to you sent me a big list of stuff and I was like oh new, new Call of Duty game big whoop, whoop. Well, I go ahead and I, sounds like me whoop whoop I just clicked on it well let's see big explosions mm-hmm. um, Check. famous actors yeah mm-hmm. uh, pretty pretty exciting uh, story um, man I can't wait to watch this movie yeah exactly yeah wait for this yeah. movie to come out this summer yeah like that's that's pretty awesome mm-hmm. to watch a video game trailer and to realize like man this is the new summer block block Buster that's coming out, and there'll probably be another one next year. Because that's that's what Call of Duty's been building up to. Like people get excited every year or two for the next for the next big Call of Duty game. So the idea that yeah, you know what? Let's just start bringing in famous actors because <laughs> now people are just fans of Kevin Spacey. Oh yeah, just fans of movies. Well, I mean, I actually you know, I, I s- see that maybe I um they let's just make a movie. You know, I'd gotten into. Like I kind of have my morning r- work routine. I don't really check the gaming news till a couple hours after I've kind of gotten set. And I actually, the first person I saw post this was a Kevin Spacey fan, not a video game fan. So it was yeah. just like, oh, well, now Call of Duty has my attention. I was just kind of like, it, you know, it also has my attention because I'm not a Call of Duty fan, but I'll like, I will watch the spectacle every now and then. And this, yeah. this is, um, it, it has my attention. So I want to see where it goes, even though it'll probably be the same old, you know, four to five hour campaign and. Uh, It'll be a lot of the bridge is exploding and you have to run across it. Yeah, but uh, man, look at that skybox exploding! It's beautiful. But they can, man, they can cut a trailer. They, their marketing yeah. team is uh, back on their game. So um, the other interesting that, thing, just the subject matter of the uh, trailer was hilarious too. Like these countries don't want democracy; <laughs> they, so, they want to be ruled. Was, and I'm the man to do it. Like, I mean, just it's the good, the Kevin trailer, Spacey. The trailer, yeah, it's so totally, awesome. totally House of Cards DLC <laughs> to follow because. It was definitely yeah. tapping into that character. Um, but the other interesting thing about this game is, so Call of Duty has now switched. Instead of doing uh, being worked on by two studios and they, them alternating each year, it's now three studios alternating every three years. So yeah. each game will have a three-year development cycle. And this is, this is Sledgehammer Games' first Call of Duty game, which is, from what I understand, they're comprised of a lot of the guys that made the first Dead Space game. Like they're so I'm curious to see what they'll do if they if they'll they'll change things up. So I'll I'll keep an eye on it. But um but yeah, Kevin Spacey got my attention. So um actually I think that's gonna do it for for our headlines. Let's uh let's go ahead and wrap the show up with your uh, your game industry shout outs. Um I guess I'll shout out uh 
Secrets of Grindia. Played that game um, on the podcast a couple of nights ago, and then uh, yeah, it was a lot of fun. Like um, Aaron sent us a sent us around a link. All the guys on the uh, on the show a couple weeks ago, just just seeing if anybody was interested in it. Um, and the um, the developers had two videos up, and one was just a, you know just a little like trailer for the game, and then the second one was a ten minute long. Um, this is the game mechanics of the game that we were investigating. The way the block and skill canceling works. And I remember thinking like, man, this is this is a like a two D top down Zelda game. Like you guys, this. This is not Diablo. This is you know. This is not World of Warcraft. You guys are taking this way too seriously. But then um, when we actually started playing it, and I realized like, wow, there are just a ton of different kinds of spells, a lot of different ways to play the game. There, there's a lot of different ways to make your character. I've been playing all these like massive RPGs lately, where you know you've got to play the game two or three more times just because well, I never used magic. <laughs> I was just using swords. I think I'm going to use bows and magic now. So, yeah. And just a si- real simple top down 2D uh, RPG. I mean, it just feels like um, uh, Link to the Past, but with this, like, advanced 2014 layer of, uh, of sophisticated game mechanics. It's, it's such it. a weird, like, caught, caught in, like, a time space. Like, yeah. It, like,. <laughs> I don't know. It looks so much like a '90s 16-bit RPG. Yeah, Super and, Nintendo game, but and then because it immediately reminded me of Secret of Mana and playing that that game local co-op with my friends, and the fact that we could do that online was the big appeal to me. But I was like, but honestly, I was like, sure, it looks like one of those, but it's not going to feel good. Like it's going to be clunky. Yeah. Like it's going to yeah. be awkward. It's it's just and it'll get old. It'll get old real yeah. quick. But I really it'll just be us killing the same the slimes and rabbits over and over and over. It feels again. great. It feels <laughs> like it. I yeah. really like the 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 upgrading system in the combat and. I will say, from a game mechanic standpoint, I do hate the fact that um, when you're running and then you attack, he stops. Oh. The um, all the um, side-scrolling Castlevania games do the same thing, and I think the reason they do it is because it's difficult to animate a sword attack with a running animation because you have to separate the feet and the upper body, and so it's just easier to stop the player. Because yeah. I've been de- I've, I've been dealing with this too, because I kind of I kind of hate hate that when you're running forward and you and you swing your sword and the character just stops dead in his place. So I actually for the game I'm working, I I took a um, from a, a idea from the uh, Tiny Barbarian DX, I just slow the character down a bit. You're still moving forward, mm. just a bit slower. So that's just real funny. Now that I'm actually working on games, and then actually after listening to their like you're, breakdown, you're of going down specific a, game mechanics. I'm no, I'm starting to notice stuff like you're that. going like, down a dark hole, man. Like it's like I, I don't know if I like this. Yep. That, that I you're gonna start paying attention when, to when I swing my sword, but. But I get it. Yeah, I, was, I also I, like when you when you run into the enemies, you don't take damage. You don't take damage until they attack you. That's another. I like that. It's also worth mentioning that no fault of the game. It's Earl. It's in beta right now. But it took us an hour to get the <laughs> get our router set up so we could play multiplayer. But the fact that I we pushed through that and still had as good of a time. Yeah. I just, just I was brilliant. Well, you guys really had a good time. I was. I was dead for a while. I wasn't having. No, I wasn't really, having a good time. We don't like playing with you, but we was, just like was to have. Regretting the hour that I sat there listening to you guys talk about opening <laughs> ports. Like, what am I? Why am I even still here? Why? Just, I'm closing my ports for good. <laughs> That's what I'm doing. I um, love that they added emotes to the ghost. Man, yes, fantastic. So, fantastic, so like, like I said, fantastic little touches that like I yeah. don't expect to be in there and. I don't know. Keep an eye on it when it when it. But yeah, I went ahead. I, yeah, I played the game last night because I had only played it for the multiplayer, and mm. I didn't pay attention to anything. No, you like, did not. Time, and you got pissed was, when I there did. Was <laughs> any conversation, I just got right through it. But then I kept wondering too, like, how does Justin know where we're supposed to go? And then I got. And then last night I was like, yeah, I'd, I'd better go ahead and play the game again, and then I could talk about it a little bit today. But yeah, I played it for like three and a half hours awesome. last night. Awesome. Yeah. And uh, I got about as far as we did in the podcast playing with the the three of us but i'll be curious yeah. how much content's actually in the beta versus how much is going to be in the in the full release too but mm-hmm. really really impressed with what we what we saw um my shout out uh, is you know what sounds like this world of warcraft movie might actually happen because <laughs> they're almost done filming the damn thing um I have right, to, when I, is the movie supposed to come out though? okay originally it was supposed to come out um it was supposed to come out the 
the same. Yes, it was originally supposed to come out December eighteenth, twenty fifteen. So you know okay. it has a, a year, year and a half of post production yeah. because obviously this game, this game, this the movie's gonna have a lot of special <laughs> effects. So Call they, of Duty's a movie, World of Warcraft's yeah. a movie. So they announced that, and then um, uh, some little movie called Star Wars also picked that date. So they <laughs> moved it to March of 2016. Yeah, but it's Disney's Star Wars. So. <laughs> um, so it's still, I forgot that it's still 2016. So there'll, be a, there'll be a sing-along. But, a cantina, cantina sing where say everyone sings. But I don't know, like any anytime they announce any video game movie is in production you just can it never happens and so the okay. fact that because so, that was going to be my question why did they announce that <laughs> <laughs> like, but like, that's probably why they're like hey people real we thing. are doing this mm-hmm. yeah we, and we just finished a big we just got a big milestone people i, I uh I am interested though because the movie's not supposed, still not, still not supposed to come out for a while, right? And they just said in another three weeks, basically two years. <laughs> yeah. Look at it with all the um, acting, with all the mm-hmm. so it's all so it's all just CGI from here on out, right? Yep, two years of CGI. Yeah. But you know that it's but it's know, on the, like a big orc drama as well. So, but if you I mean, think about it, it's just dressing people up as orcs. They're starting to film Star Wars now, and it's coming out next December. It's on a kind of a similar like post production schedule to that. So, um, but except I'm sure Star Star Wars probably has a little bit more money behind it. Um, Mm -hmm. Well, I assume they've probably less CGI characters. I hope this time around. Where I, uh, where, hey, hey, Andy, Andy Circus Warcraft movies gonna have a ton. Andy Circus is on the Star Wars cast, so. Gollum is is uh, is going to happen. In Star it's a possibility. Wars. Yeah. Okay. Um, anyway, I just thought that was I didn't think it would happen. So <laughs> you really didn't. I it just I mean these movies get you tossed thought, around all the time. It was just going to not be talked about for like a year, and then it just it was just going to peter out. Yeah, I mean because like there's some, been so many other um, there's been so many other video game movies that that happens to, but you know this one does have a little bit. Name five. Now, uh, uh, Last of Us. It, um, you said a lot, and you said it with confidence. <laughs> Name five. Assassin's Creed still out there. Um, now we're gonna make like three of those, so that's like four already. Right. Uh, <laughs> oh, Hitman got made. Um, Trying to think of the other ones. I'm just kidding. You don't. You don't have to name five. No, we need to sit here until I figure it out. Actually, let's let's end the show. Let's take it home. <laughs> so, um, thanks everybody for listening to us. Uh, you can catch these shows every Tuesday night at eight o'clock. We uh, record these live on Twitch TV slash Horrible Night. So, you can uh, come at eight o'clock. We might not start till about eight. We'll technically be on. But show up early. Show we'll up here. early and be bored. <laughs> I'll we be are. in chat. I'm in chat all day. Just, anything just but punctual to, to pop in, so I have somebody to talk to. <laughs> Um, but thanks everybody for hanging out Jordan thanks for coming by and we'll see you guys next time bye bye